Here we have a Dell Alienware laptop, 17 inch. It came in because of a problem with the keyboard. The G key is not working, the H key is not working, the one key is not working along with some other keys. The first thing that we did was order another keyboard and uh, we got the keyboard and we still had issues with the same exact keys. So we know the problem is not the keyboard itself, it's something to do with the motherboard. Right now we disassemble the board and what I want to do is take a look at the keyboard connector from front of the board and from back of the board and see if there's anything obvious. Hopefully we can figure out the problem because I never had to deal with this issue before. We do not have any circuit or board diagrams for this laptop. I do not know if we're going to come to a conclusion to why some keys are not working on the keyboard, but we have to inspect the lines of the keyboard connector. So if we look at front of the board, right here, we do see the lines, but the lines appear to be going to back of the board. Okay, let me remove that RAM stick. Yeah, you see all those lines are actually going to back of the board. So we are interested in looking at back of the board. And those capacitors, they're all here. Maybe we can measure every single one of them to see if there's a problem. I'm going to measure in ohms mode and we should get a very large value or possibly an OL for each one of them. This one is showing 362K. All right. I do not know what the real value should be, but let's test this one. 357. So we're going to assume that that's the proper value. 356K, 359K, 355, 356, 352, good. I mean, the components look good. So I have no reason to believe that the problem is coming from any one of those components. So every single one of them is the same. Reading the same values. 355, 352, 354, 359. As long as they are close in value, then we should be good. All right. We're good here. Now I want to inspect the lines Follow the lines down here and up here. Oh, look at this. Look at this. We're going to have to test and see if this line is making a connection to this point here because that's one line. We have rust here or corrosion. We do not know if the circuit is broken. Let's continue with the inspection of the lines. And I see one here. Wow. And I see, what's this? Nothing. And I see one here. What the? I mean, is that something common on Dell laptops? This is the first time I fix a Dell Alienware with such an issue. But how are those vias rusting or corroding? And I do not see anything obvious here. I see three problematic areas. Why don't we start with this one? We're going to grab our grinding pen. And let's grind this area. I think we should be good here. I do not see any break in the line, but of course we can measure to verify meter in continuity mode and we're going to measure from here to here and we're good. So this one looks off, but it's actually good. We have one here also. and I think we may have a problem here. I think we may have a problem here. 
let's see let's measure the middle pad is totally gone that's what I see and look at this huh. that may be our problem Yeah, I mean, look at that pad. It connects the top and the bottom line. It's totally gone. So the line is broken from here. And I think we still have one more. This one right here. Gone. Gone with the wind. gone with the wind so we have two lines to restore how did those pads corrode and disappear that's the question let's measure from here to here and the line is broken okay we're gonna restore this one and this one and I do not think that there are any more to fix based on what I can tell let's start with this one Add some flux and we're going to prep the pads. We need flux. Soldering does not work without flux. And I think we're going to use a pad strip for this. We're going to use the tail off a pad strip because they are tiny and I have one here we use the pad I cut it and I kept this one here we can use it for this purpose the tail is thin and tiny it's perfect for that purpose and exactly the same size wire as that line Wow, that's just perfect. It's a perfect size wire, perfect alignment. Wow, I could not have done a better job. That's amazing. And let's see how it came out. Wow, that's just perfect. We just want to make sure that this line is not touching this pad here. And it's not what we have to measure. We cannot take a chance because reassembling this motherboard is not easy. Okay, and we're good. Now we're going to do the same thing here. And let's see if we can grab one of those pads pad strips and use it for that purpose you can purchase those pad strips off our site northwitchfix.com click on shop I went over them in a previous video but for all new viewers if you do not already know we have three different types and right now I'm using type number two from best get rid of the glare now we want to make sure not to cut those lines when trying to break this off maybe we can do this and this and this and that and this and that Now what we can do is apply solder mask and cover it. We do not have to, but why not? It only takes a minute. Just a tiny bit goes a long way. 
because if you apply a lot, then it will take longer for solder mass to heal. Just a tiny layer. Where's the other one? Right there. Right, and done. The job is done. I'm gonna give this to Big Boss to reassemble and test, and I'll be back to finish the video. Great news, keyboard is fully functional. I put a piece of foil tape so we can hide the name. And mainly I'm interested in G and H. G and H are both working, they were not working before. And number one on the side here was not working either, and now it's working. I tested all the keys, Q, W, E, R, T, Y, U, I, O, P, and then let me go back, L, K, J, H, G, F, D, S, A, very good, and now M, N, B, V, C, X, Z. All right, so all the keys are functioning. We're going to invoice and mail this back to the customer. That's it. We're going to end the video right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.